everyone's had a moment uh, to reflect while we look forward to enjoy our summer season. We remain vigilant to the dangers that our current world brings to our doorstep. All of us in public safety knows that New York and Washington is target number one for international terrorists, and we don't know where the next target is for domestic terrorists. So you have to, you have to stay vigilant, and we have to be aware. We're hoping that this meeting is a foundation on which to be built. In a post-9-11 world, only through a community effort, aligned to barriers that separate us, can we achieve life, happiness, and our security. In emergency services, we must always, and especially in dire economic times of today, rely on combined and shared resources to produce superior services at a cost that taxpayers can afford. We must also be vigilant to recognize amongst us those that would choose to use barriers and would speak against the united effort. We're trying to maintain independence from the united effort. In a post-9-11 world, their position must go away. If they insist, they must go away because their views create a danger for all of us and to the freedom that we all cherish. As in the words of Abraham Lincoln <coughs> at Gettysburg, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So please, let us all move forward together as one community. Thank you so much for coming. I know we ran a little late. Yeah. Plenty of food still left. Cool. Which was recently renamed in honor of the late great Rabbi Morton Friedman of blessed memory, the father of Rabbi Abe and Rabbi Joel. An extraordinary, extraordinary personality. I was at an event uh, not long before he passed away at his home in Kiras Joel, and it was inspiring and heartwarming to see people of all faiths and all denominations humbly walking up to him and asking for his blessing. He was a saintly man. He was a man who exuded spirituality. And so he was, he's, it's a very, very fitting tribute to him that the Slotesburg Minion Station has been uh, named in his honour. And his two sons are going to be there during the summer months every Thursday from, I think, 5 p.m. until midnight to ensure that everything goes smoothly and that all rules and regulations are adhered to. And I understand someone from the New York State Troopers Office who um, oversees Slotesburg is here this morning. And uh, I convey our warm thanks for that. These are a few little insights into some of the aspects of our beliefs and traditions and practices uh, that you may come across in your daily work. And uh, for those who are already familiar with this, I apologize uh, for repeating things that are familiar to you, but it's a useful thing to restate them from time to time. I uh, accept with uh, gratitude the honor, the honor of having uh, been asked to say a few words here. I wish everyone a wonderful, wonderful summer a healthy summer above everything else, a successful summer, a summer of peace and security, a summer of tranquility where we can all enjoy life and develop, particularly our children, to the maximum possible extent. Bringing this all together, hope to continue having a successful relationship, saving people's lives, anybody, anywhere, anytime, and do everything for each other. Thank you very much. One of the things I've noticed is that there's no change in the number, increasing numbers of cases that we handle just up in the Casco region during this year. Over the last three years, we went from over 1,500 to now over 2,000 cases. Each year, we're basically experiencing a between 5 and 10 percent increase. It doesn't appear, maybe because of what was mentioned earlier, people are living, doing their vacationing in, in the area rather than traveling off to far distant and expensive places. Uh, while at the same time, some people are not going to the country, there seem to be more and more people who are opting for local vacation. Uh, in any case, one of the differences between what we find in Osala during the year and five boroughs, where we're operating, we do about uh, 47,000 calls every year. We do about two, two and a half thousand throughout the year in the Catskills, most of which are done in the last eight weeks of the summer. Uh, what we find is there's a tremendous number of young people, middle-aged people, whereas during the year we have a high preponderance, most of the neighbors are old people, heart attacks, drugs, other kinds of abdominal problems. There are many, many accidents. A lot of people come up for the weekend and they think they're, you know, they're 
still 20 years old, they run and play full court basketball, and they're 45 and 50, and uh, we, know, we know what that happens. Then they go riding a bike, and they have to have a bike all year, and you get a bump, and boom. So we have a lot of cases of younger uh, males and females getting hurt, children, of course, in camps, we have new numbers of kids in camp. We're always looking for ways to increase the number of medics that we put out there, and this year we're trying to set up a list of five, and uh, Gibbs, and trying to help us put together a large number of medics up in the country so that we'll cover another area, uh, and working on better ways to find, uh, to get people to the local hospitals, but also to the city hospitals when it's necessary and when it's required. So we really appreciate all the help we get from the various services, not only police, but especially police, but as well from the fire and emergency services, and working together with everyone to help you. Communication makes, does wonders. You know, at a meeting that happened about a week and a half ago in the village of Kedrill, I said the same thing. That when I was, I'm still young, right? But when I was real young and I started to deal with law enforcement, uh, I had the same story with the female officer. And I, I'm going to say it short because I said it the last time. About an officer that didn't understand the tradition, wasn't told about the tradition. And uh, before she got the sensitivity training to understand, she got angry because an individual did not hand over his license registration insurance when he was asked, but rather he put it on his dashboard, not explaining why, and she had to bend into the car to get it, and she got angry that she hit him with the book. And then when she understood what the situation was, it was a total different understanding. So that's why communication makes wonders. First of all, I want to say hello to my undersheriff. I'm the chaplain for the Green County, and the undersheriff arrived, HPT, you were on time, <laughs> city people time. Uh, so I want to thank him for making the effort to attend, and I want to thank Homeland Security and all the sheriffs and everybody else, and of course the state police who we see all the time. I'm, my residence is in the city of New York, I'm coming from the city of New York, but we come a lot to the state, and I'm a lot in the village of Kitty Joel, and I do want to tell you, by the way, I want to commend the village for the kind of work that they do in the village of Kitty Joel. It's a tremendous organization, a tremendous village that has grown, I think, faster than any village within the state of New York. And despite that, they have come across to do safety and security to the best. And of course, with the partnership of the Orange County Sheriff's, State Police, and everybody else. And of course, my friend Rabbi Bernard Froelich, Rabbi Friedman, and all the others. Uh, that I'm dealing with Rabbi Indik and the city of New York and everybody else. But uh, thank you. God bless everybody. Let's hope we have a safe and quiet summer.